Okay, here we go. Let's can do this. Welcome, my friends, to the 2024 Year Ahead Tarot and Akashic Reading. If you don't happen to know me already and you've stumbled upon this video or this audio through some algorithmic magic, my name is Amy Belair. I am an Akashic Oracle, a seer, and a channel, and this is my energy report for the entirety of 2024. So right off the bat, this is a very interesting year energetically. To be honest, there's a lot about this year that doesn't want to be seen and articulated. Um, I, I was invited to participate in a channel, a channeling summit, the Clear Channel Summit back in the autumn. And in October was when I first tuned in to 2024. And a lot of that year a lot of well here we are now 2024 a lot of this year at that time was like you are not ready to see me you are not ready to understand and I feel even doing this energy report for the entire year I feel like there is still a similar cloaking over top of it like there are things that are not for us to see this year not for us to know in advance um, because it does not benefit us to have that information beforehand. But I brought through everything that I can about this year. I also have been feeling guided for quite a long time, like probably the last six months, to stop doing energy reports in the traditional sort of predictive way. Um, even it's very challenging though, because that's how an energy report is set up to speak about like, we're going to experience this, this is going to happen. But um, I just keep getting this message that to frame it that way is to perpetuate an illusion of disempowerment uh, as though there's something that's going to happen in the future and we need to know what it is in advance so that we can prepare for it, so that we can arrange our schedules around it. Um, and as if knowing about it in advance is... A benefit at all. This energy report is going to be challenging to get out. I mean, there's some very beautiful things that I do see that I'm excited to talk about, but I feel like a lot of it is really exceeding my capacity to articulate it in words. So as, as always, I'm going to trust that you can receive at least a large part of it through the frequency of my voice and the harmonics of my being and the energy that I bring through my eyes as well. Okay, so that being said, I'm going to give you an overall summary of the year that I feel and what I feel is the, the purpose of this year. And then I'm going to walk us through the cards that I've pulled. So to me, this year, what it has revealed about itself for me um, is that it's a year where we are going to, I guess you could call it massively awaken, um, but I want to use different words because, you know, lots of years. <laughs> since 2016, since 2012, a lot of years have been about massive awakening. But I'm talking about those of us who are already awakened rather than brand new spiritual awakening, although I'm sure that will continue to occur. But we are going to awaken to dimensions of consciousness that we did not previously have access to on a very real level. So not just a conceptual exercise in imagining these dimensions of consciousness, but like accessing it, being there, remembering it, however you want to phrase it. It's it's even challenging to speak about in English because it's that we within our language structure and the way that we understand things there there are so many um like false notions that i have to explain it through in order for it to make sense but it's wrong it's so tough so basically basically what i feel for the entire year um but really really heavily in this first part of the year is a huge onboarding of consciousness, a massive rearranging of our um, 
cognitive faculties. I don't know. Again, it's like so hard to, to describe it. It feels like a huge growth in our brain, a huge, massive growth in our brain that allows us to receive and interpret way more sensory information as well as way more psychic information. The barriers between um, ourselves and other people or ourselves and objects, ourselves and animals, ourselves and spaces dissolves so that we are able to receive like energy off of things that we couldn't previously detect. So that would mean for example, if you are, uh, you know, you've had like social anxiety and you have a hard time in crowded spaces, then you'll, you'll know what I mean. There was probably a point in your life where you were not as sensitive to it as you have become. And at some, at some time you became super sensitive and going to, you know, a party or a mall or a movie theater or, you know, da 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 those become very challenging experiences because you're just super like sensitive. You're very porous and you're receiving all of this information. You don't really feel completely separate in the way that you maybe did in the past, um, but you still feel separate. You're still yourself in your own individual experience, but you're, you're like, you're receiving everybody's energy in a way that feels very loud and very intense. It's going to be a lot like that is what I'm understanding. So it's going to come with probably memories for a lot of us of ourselves in higher dimensions, our past in terms of Atlantis, Lemuria, prior to that, um, Stargates, how we moved through Stargates, where we existed in the higher dimensions before we came here pieces of our forgotten history, as well as like very clear past life memories within our, you know, our recorded history. So remembering a lifetime in, I don't know, medieval Denmark, or remembering a lifetime in dynastic China, like, you know what I mean? Like, Within our recorded history, there will be a lot of memories coming coming online as well as beyond our recorded history and beyond just this human timeline. It's almost like our, our perception of time has been very segmented as humans, like this tiny little lifespan, tiny little lifespan, tiny little lifespan, tiny little lifespan. And each tiny little lifespan for a very, very long while has been limited to its own time. So, you know, for example, a lot of our parents and our grandparents do not have past life memories coming through. They are just remembering this lifetime. They're remembering memories within this lifetime alone, right? So there was a strong sense of separation. And then it expands, you know, and we start getting like past life memories coming through in little bits and pieces. I feel like for us, what is the characterizing feature of this year that I am bringing through is a huge expansion of our perception of time where suddenly we're able to remember lifetime, 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 lifetime. Also, we're able to remember a strata above that of the part of ourselves, like a higher dimensional aspect of ourselves that is much longer lived and you know who has existed for thousands of years and then possibly a strata above that uh to a i don't know like a higher dimensional field of consciousness that is difficult to relate to as humans because it's quite removed from our experience so i feel like of the barriers that have kept us relegated to just one single lifetime, those are rapidly dissolving at the beginning of this year and possibly throughout the entire year. And that is going to require us to rearrange our lives in order to integrate that information and still be able to function here because the purpose is not to ascend out of the human experience or to hate the human experience, or be, I don't want to be a human anymore, bitch, 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 wine, wine, wine. It is hard down here. It is absolutely hard down here. But the purpose is not to get stuck in that, you know, space of hating the human experience. The purpose is to 
be deeply anchored into the human experience and understand that you are a grounding rod for this higher dimensional consciousness and the light that comes with that higher dimensional consciousness and the resolution of bigger energetic themes that have been playing out within human dramas, when you allow yourself to be in the human experience, as well as allow yourself to become expanded into the awareness of your higher dimensional self, um, aspects of yourself, because there are multiple layers, like Russian nesting dolls, like you're the little, you human you, you're the little core, the little little baby homunculus doll in the middle that doesn't open any further. And then you have these outer shells that are also you. And those outer shells are having a different experience, have access to different dimensions, different information, um, but the same energetic themes are playing out through all of them. Hopefully you're tracking what I'm trying to say, <laughs> it's hard to describe. It's really hard to describe. So, so yeah, basically that's what I understand as being the important piece of this whole entire year. And mostly when I look at the whole year and the spread, and furthermore, when I feel into the year, I really don't feel a lot of, um, turbulence and disruption outside of that it's almost like we get a little break I'm not saying shit isn't going to go down in your life because how would I ever know I'm doing a general reading right now for the people who I'm doing a, a personal reading for we'll see but for a lot of us um, I feel like overall there's some chill and some rearranging to our lives that allows us more space to be able to um, integrate this information. And that's the characterizing sort of theme of what's coming through. Okay, okay. So getting into the cards themselves. Where did I put my cards? <laughs> there they are, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, so the first two cards I pulled <clears throat> are, I pulled them with the energy of, what is this year all about? Like, what do we need to keep in mind through the whole entire year? And I pulled two cards. The first is from my favorite tarot deck, which is the Moonchild Tarot by Danielle Noel. And the second is from the Star Seed Oracle deck, which is created by Rebecca Campbell and Danielle Noel. So I pulled through the Six of Wands and a card called Surrender to the Sweetness. The message that came through with both of these cards is to acknowledge and remember that we are, we are reclaiming something very important right now. Um, <clears throat> the, the Six of Wands is talking about emerging victorious from a, a scuffle or a small battle. It's not the huge like ultimate battle um, in like, it's not, we didn't win the war to use that analogy. It's a battle and it's possibly a small personal battle. And yet that victory is very important to acknowledge. That card being paired with the card of surrender to the sweetness the way that I interpret it, the information that comes through is in keeping with something that I've, some guidance I've been getting just in the last few weeks myself, which is that this reality, it's the, it's the acknowledgement that this manifested reality is so beautiful, is so like limitless, fathomless, this moment, this moment, this manifested moment is truly fathomless. There is so much manifested information here, as well as so much psychic information, which just means information that is not manifested in, you know, in a way that we in interact with through our physical senses. 
there's so much information in this now moment that if we could even tune into a larger fraction of that, because I feel like we're barely, barely connecting to, like, are we even skimming the surface of this now moment? I don't know. We're so distracted, so distracted. And of course it's on purpose. But if we could even drop into like, I don't know, because I don't know what unit of measurement to use to describe it, but if we could drop into a fraction of this now moment, we would be forever satiated. There would be no sense of needing anything. There would be no, there would be no hunger. There would no be, be no poverty. There would be, there's so much information here. There's so much that is manifested and it is so beautiful and it is so generous that the real sort of pity is that we, um, we have forgotten how to tune into it, but we are remembering and that's the victory. We are remembering despite all of the ways that we are being programmed to constantly forget and evade this now moment and stay stuck on the eternal hamster wheel of Blair. I got to get this done. I got to go there by that time. You know, this is whatever. I need to call this person. We are remembering the beauty of this reality. We are reclaiming the beauty of the human experience, the beauty of this realm. And also while this world is going through a lot of intense, crazy stuff, and there is a lot to feel hopeless about, more and more and more of us are feeling hopeful because we are able to connect with that beauty and savor it. The sweet, precious moments that, you know, are, seem so tiny that they are negligible and yet they are, they're everything. They're what this is actually all about little moments like, you know, sitting with your cat who is on your lap purring. We take it so for granted. And yet the beauty in those little moments can feed us forever. So that is the sort of like overarching, like this is what you need to keep in mind this year is like you are you are winning a very important battle as you reclaim your consciousness and you reclaim your human experience and you reclaim your ownership over this realm. Like you belong here. This is not somewhere for you to basically, you know, I was saying that, you know, a lot of us are like, I don't want to be a human anymore. Being a human sucks. It's so hard here. It is hard here. It's not supposed to be this hard. And we are reclaiming that. And we are saying like, I don't care how hard you've made it seem. I'm talking the false matrix. I don't care how hard you've made it seem. I want to be here and I choose this place and I choose this life and I choose the beauty in it. And there's so much power in that. Okay. And then I pulled three cards to know like who is walking with us this year, almost like spirit guides um, or kind of like our archetypal guides that are, are moving with us through this year and what they are helping us with. So the first card that I pulled for that is the eight of pentacles, which is, it's about human level cultivation of our craft it's about like it's it's about deciding to become a master of your craft even though you aren't a master you are putting in the time the sweat equity the energy the intention you are prioritizing it one of the messages that i've gotten um really strongly within myself over the last quarter of 2023 and it's even stronger. It's like kicked up a notch super loud just in the last couple of days of 2023 is that I feel, I feel like it is imperative for me to um, choose a discipline, 
to choose some kind of discipline to ground myself through and to grow through. So that could be a movement practice, that could be breath work, that could be um, a type of meditation, but it's something where you show up and you do it every day. And you don't do it like, if I have time, you do it like, this is who I am. Some of you have that already. Maybe you'll be called to add to it or take it to a new level, but it feels like the purpose of it is on one hand to anchor in our gifts, anchor in all of this information that is coming in this year, all of these memories, all of that. Um, but on the other hand, it is to prepare ourselves to be able to utilize these gifts. Like, we have to meet this experience halfway. We don't get to just sit back and let all of the downloads come in and all of the, you know, like, we don't just get to be psychically activated and just one day, like, poof, you know, whatever. God comes down and touches you on your third eye and suddenly you can see everything with clarity and you don't have to do any work for it. That's not that's not how it goes here, nor would we want it to go that way because the things that are coming through for us are very, very powerful and we need to be able to hold them responsibly. And so the Eight of Pentacles is that, that path of devotion that it, it's like an archetype of the master crafter who is on this path of ever ascending mastery through physical discipline and physical practice. It's a very human card. Like this isn't about ascended masters. This is about like, as a human being, how do we bring this mastery into our lives? We do it through discipline. Like I said, we don't just magically get you know, activated in our gifts without, like when our magic is coming online, we don't want our magic to come online in full force when we are unprepared for it. We want to continually be honing our consciousness and our energy so that we can like use this magic in ways that are predictable and controlled and therefore not, you know, um, wild and destructive. And in order to do that, the, the energy of the eight of pentacles is, you know, what is coming through for us. The next card that I pulled of like, who's walking with us this year is the hanged man, which is a major arcana card about waiting for the other shoe to drop. It's kind of um, being in a state of suspense. So this year, it, it might even feel like a lot of our goals or our progress is temporarily halted or things are, are paused. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how it's gonna play out for you, but that's what's coming through for me to understand and explain this card and the way that it is supporting us through this year is our main work is to integrate this level of consciousness through the entire year. And so you might feel like, you know, you had goals for yourself, you had goals for your business, you had goals to, um, I don't know, buy a new house, you had goals to start a family or get married. And you may feel that those goals are paused for a period. And you don't know for how long, and it can be very frustrating. The hanged man, the energy of the hanged man is where you just allow yourself to surrender any ego-based attempt to speed along or control the outcome or whatever. Um, the part of us that, like I was saying earlier, wants to know what is coming so that we can plan our schedule around it and prepare ourselves for it. You're, you're releasing all of that. You are surrendering to the mystery of the process. You're surrendering to the fact that it's not for you to know. 
like when something is finally going to start moving forward again, or when you're going to be able to do this or that. And to do so with as much grace as possible. Of course, perfection is never required, nor is it even like sustainable for us as human beings, but continually reaching for a state of grace or returning to a state of grace in this surrendered process is, you know, what is what we're being invited into. The hang demand can be really hard energy. It's a little bit like, like a baby that is, you know, gestating and like, we know that the baby's going to be born. We have an estimated due date, but that is, there's like, that's an estimated due date based on when we think the baby was conceived. There's so many variables, right? So that's why babies are seldom born on their due date. Some of them are, but most of the time they aren't. It's because that due date is our best guess at <laughs> predicting a process that is by necessity mysterious. And it can be frustrating, especially if you're a type A person and you have a lot of things on your schedule and you're just like, I just want to know when this baby's coming so I can plan for it and whatever. But in nature, in the absence of human, you know, medicalized intervention, we just don't, we're not privy to that information and we just have to deal with it. And the more grace that we can um, achieve as we continually surrender to a process that is out of our control is the more grace we can achieve, the more wisdom we attain and the easier it is for us to move through similar situations in the future. So the hanged man is walking with us this year as like a spirit guide to help us access those states of grace and surrender. And then the final um, energy that's walking with us this year as a as like a spirit guide is the chariot. So while some things are going to be in a state of suspense, other things are going to be moving fast, just barreling forward. I feel like this has to do with our consciousness, the amount of information that's going to come in and the upgrades that are going to be required in our like awareness, our the chariot to me, when I feel into this and like what this spirit guide is um, helping us with is like, almost like he's saying, even though it's a woman depicted on the card, it feels like a masculine energy to me. Um, and, and it feels like he's saying, <laughs> listen, you just have to keep up. You have to do what you have to do to keep up. It's going to be a lot of change, like internally a lot of change at the, the level of your consciousness. And you're going to have to rapidly in real time learn how to rearrange your internal framework for understanding reality so that you can keep up. And as your internal you know, landscape changes, your external landscape is going to change. Meaning like as within, so without what you experience the, the amount of change and transformation you experience as your consciousness expands rapidly this year um, is going to be reflected in your external hologram. And so you're going to be dealing with internal changes as well as external changes. And it's going to require like your focus and your dexterity to be able to keep up with it. Okay, so I pulled a card for every month of the year and rather than rather than interpreting them predictively, I framed it as like, what, what do we need to remember or keep in mind as we're moving through the months of this year? with the acknowledgement that it's obviously going to play out very differently for every individual, um, but these reminders are sort of going to apply to all of us in whatever way makes sense to us at the time. Okay, so for the month of January, which we are now in, oh my God, I can't believe it. <laughs> I've been looking forward to January so much. I'm so excited to be here. Um, 
what we need to keep in mind is the nine of wands. So the nine of wands is a card that's talking about meditation and internal strength, but which is a theme that comes up multiple times in this year, the, the, the overarching theme really being like, we have to develop a, a grounded practice of meditation or some kind of discipline that quiets the mind that masters the self and allows us to uh keep up with all of the change and all of the expansion of our, of our consciousness in january basically what i feel is a lot of like the main bulk of the consciousness expansion to me feels like it happens through january and february and then it echoes through you know it continues through March, but it starts to ebb away in March. And then we, it's like it peaks probably at the end of February, up here. And then in March, it starts to descend, but we're still getting a lot of the light. And then in April um, and May, it evens out and onward. That's what it feels like to me, like this big bolus of consciousness. <clears throat> like I want to keep these short and I have so much to say okay so <laughs> it just feels like so much in January just so much rearranging comes in so much shifting of our perception of ourselves our perception of reality <clears throat> I don't know how else to describe it because I don't know how you're going to experience it is it going to be downloads is it going to be just knowing is it going to come in like you're going to discover a book that blows your mind wide open or a show that blows your mind wide open, or like, I don't know how these activations are going to come through for every individual. But what I do know is that it feels like it's just going to be a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And there could be a point where if you're not used to this, it can start to feel very uncomfortable. Um, like you're having a hard time dealing with all of this information, which I think is what I was trying to describe at the beginning before I even went into the cards where it, it like, like suddenly having your empathic gifts turned on and like you cannot handle being in a crowd. It's just too much. That's what it feels like. It's just boom. Suddenly the barriers that we've been used to, to help us mediate the amount of information that comes in, those barriers are either they're gone, they're thinned out, something, and way more information is coming in, way more awareness of what is really going on here. And yet it's a very personal experience. It's not based on like a, um, a common external event. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not like in 2020 when we had uh, the COVID thing happen, like that was a big trigger for a lot of us to be like, wait a minute, what the... Um, and we could sort of like ground ourselves into that external event to, to like, if we started feeling like we were crazy or we were going off the rails or, you know, it creates a lot of cognitive dissonance to suddenly be like, whoa, whoa, something is happening here that is not on the up and up. Um, but you could go back to the facts of that external event and sort of check yourself against that. And that was that allowed us to ground. Whereas it feels like this year we're experiencing it right now in January as a very internal personal experience that you don't have anything to check it against that everyone else can verify. Um, and so you're having to do a lot of work to rapidly adjust your internal sense of identity and your perception of reality in order to sort of keep up with this and it can have you feeling crazy and it can have you feeling very overwhelmed and like to take that literal example of suddenly having your empathic gifts just blown wide open and you're like I cannot handle being in crowds like I can't deal with it or going inside certain buildings it's like the energy of the building like I can't I can't deal with it and it's so destabilizing to just suddenly have all of that like level of sensitivity and awareness that you can't really explain to anybody else. And so the card, the nine of wands is, it's talking about 
a period in our lives where we wish that we could just quit because it feels too intense and it feels too hard. And like, we're just like, I, I don't have anything left. I can't deal with this. I don't want to do it anymore. I just want to quit. And we enter entertain the fantasy that we even can quit in the first place. Sometimes we can, but usually we end up having to do it over again anyway. You know what I mean? Um, the guidance of the nine of wands is to just keep going. So the examples I like to use around the nine of wands, well, I'll just use one. It's like um, my own personal examples. When I was finishing up my midwifery program, I was so exhausted. I wanted to die. I knew I didn't even want to be a midwife anymore. I was so tired. I was grieving and full trauma and so spent and like I like on an hourly basis I thought about quitting probably a minutely basis I was like I just I'm like I'm ready to be done I don't care and I had probably like three weeks left to go and I pulled this card I was pulling a card for myself every day and one day I pulled this card and I was like okay, I just have to finish. So the guidance with the nine of wands, the thing for us to keep in mind is to just dig deep and keep going. One step after the other, you can do this. And you do it through basically like, I'll call it meditation. It is going to come up again in this reading. Um, but you do it through meditation because it's an internal, you are you are digging deep to your deep inner reserves to get through this. But the card for February, the thing for us to keep in mind is super exciting. It is the magician. So in February, it probably starts feeling pretty good. I think, I don't know, we'll see. But the magician card is an exciting card. That's us, the magician is us. We are creators here. We are creator beings. You are creating your reality. You are manifesting it 100% of the time, whether you want to or not. It's a beautiful thing. You, you know, the way they say it is as above, so below. And that is definitely true. So what is happening in the higher dimensions is happening in the lower dimensions, which is, you know, why it's important that we are also accessing our higher dimensional selves. And again, I feel like this is sort of in a lot of ways going to be a passive experience that is happening where suddenly we are accessing our higher dimensional selves. And then it's also active as we ground it in through discipline and um, mastery. But as above, so below, but equally importantly, if not more importantly, as within, so without. And the magician card in February is our invitation to remember that, that we are the determining factor. We are the determining consciousness of what manifests in our reality, period. We just are. It's important. It is important now for us to remember that. The card that comes through in the month of March um, as what we need to keep in mind is temperance. So I'm just going to hold this here and talk because I feel like the art on this card is, it feels important. So temperance is talking about balance, the need to strike a balance so that you're not living in um, one extreme or another, but you are, you, first of all, you are the balancing factor of the extremes. So you are the balancing factor of polarity in this reality. Um, but also to me, this is an acknowledgement. The art on this card is an acknowledgement that our higher dimensional selves are making we could say making contact but like it's us it is us at those higher dimensions i'm talking about the ascended master realms um the um archangelic and angelic realms the seventh to tenth dimensions of consciousness the creator level consciousness that we are like I said, with that little Russian nesting doll, like you're the, you, the your, your human self is that little core doll, but you also have like layers of yourself that are existing at, let's say the eighth dimensional level where you are both, you are both and all players here. And you also remember that and you unify it through your heart. You are the, you are the unification of polarity through your heart. 
So, I mean, I'll go more in depth uh, in all these cards in the monthly energy reports themselves, but that's what's coming through for us to keep in mind in March. In April, it is the strength card. So a third major arcana card in a row. Strength is... Again, coming back to this theme of um, inner mastery, discipline, meditation, the strength card is talking about mastery over the self, and it's that kind of strength. So, so it's not strength and power that we lord over another, it is the ability to be in mastery of our thoughts and our mind, to be in mastery of our emotions, to be in mastery of our body and our, our physiological responses, as well as in mastery of our physical body in space and time as a beautiful in instrument of proprioception, like meaning like being a physical body in space <laughs> that can move and do things with our body the strength card is like mastery on all those levels and then knowing when to use our power appropriately. So whatever is coming up um, for each of us individually in the month of April, roughly like, you know, mid spring, um, we are being called to <sighs> deepen our awareness of our strength and our mastery over ourselves and not being reactive, not taking the bait. I'm definitely not saying bypassing our experiences um, or ignoring our emotions or ignoring our thoughts, but that they are not running the show. You have an observer level consciousness, a higher dimensional level of consciousness that can experience the whole human gamut and also move from a place of that, like move from the space of that observer, move from the space of that higher dimensional self rather than the reactive human self. And then in May, we have the five of pentacles, which I feel is talking about the point where, so we're having this huge influx of like downloads, activations, memories, all the things coming through. And then it, it can't last forever. It, it bottoms out and it feels like it disappears. I have people who uh, write me and just let me know that they feel they feel worried because sometimes they feel super connected and like all the downloads are coming through and they're having amazing dreams and um, maybe they feel like they're getting worked on at night or their psychic abilities are super open or whatever. Uh, and then it feels like it disappears. It goes away and they're afraid that it's not going to come back or they're afraid they they afraid that they did something wrong or they're wondering how to get it back. And what I've come to understand, because I have that experience too, is that it's simply that we cannot hold those activations ongoingly on a sustained level forever and ever. We have to, it has to disappear so that we can just like integrate it. We, so we can come back down to just being a human and like processing on the human level. Like we have to, almost like we have to get cut off from the awareness of our higher dimensional selves um, temporarily so that we can integrate that whole huge influx of um, consciousness and energy and light that just came in. And it feels um, unnerving because when you have felt directly connected and then all of a sudden it feels like that connection is gone, it's natural that we're like, what, like, where did it go? Is it ever going to come back? The guidance I get is that it's always going to come back, but when it disappears, our only work is to just be a human, like freaking, like just sleep, just take care of your body and eat. Let yourself, this 
five of pentacles time would be a time to let yourself just kind of like numb out, escape into a good show, escape into a good book. You don't have to be spiritually on all the time, unless that is your path that really called you. But if you're, if you don't feel like you need to join, um, a, a monastery or an ashram and be immersed in like spiritual discipline and the rejection of uh like the material realm on a 24 7 basis then the five of pentacles is saying like it's okay you're having a contraction you're back just in your human you feel scared and naked and alone on a rock at night <laughs> it feels like a squeeze it doesn't feel great but you're okay you're just integrating all of that which just came through for you. And then the follow-up, the, the next month, June, is the Four of Swords, which to me still feels like a very similar energy, but it's like, and now meditate. So in this one, it's like, have a bath, eat some comfort food, probably healthy comfort food, but you know, whatever. Um, just watch a show, like binge watch a show or something that isn't heavy, like let your human process all of that. Let it go quiet, okay? Don't panic. Let it, let there be some radio silence for a while. And then when you have like emotionally recovered and physiologically recovered from that stark energy of like, it just got, everything got cut off or everything disappeared, then move into the four of swords which is like meditate this is your jedi like you are a little jedi in training you are a padawan and you need to meditate cultivate that inner stillness connect with the force from a human level so this is where like before it was almost like flooding in all this information was flooding in and so you're kind of just passively like receiving it and processing it in real time and be like, whoa. And then that information flow stops and you're like, oh my God. Oh my God. And you're kind of panicking because you're also like, where did it go? What if it never comes back? Oh my God, I don't want to be here alone. I can't go back to this like, you know, dark human world without being connected to the source at that level. Uh, and then it evolves into like, okay, now I'm the one that needs to meditate and not necessarily reach for that higher consciousness, but I need to create stillness. I need to create space for the next wave of light to come in. And the thing for us to keep in mind in July is the ace of pentacles and the way that i interpret this is simply like there is a new beginning on a physical level like it's a new seed of something i don't know what it is don't know how it's going to play out for any of us don't feel like i want to know but it's like there's something precious and new it's a brand new seed you cannot expect it to start, you know, like yielding flowers for you right away. You are just germinating this seed. It's a precious little baby seed. You're taking care of it. You are making sure that it is watered. It's well soaked. It has the right conditions to germinate and you are leaving it alone otherwise. And you are just like, you know, appreciating this seed, this little new beginning in your physical life. The card of what we need to keep in mind in August is another major arcana card. It's the Wheel of Fortune. And when I tuned into this to understand what, like what specifically to bring through that we need to keep in mind, it, it was very clear to me that it's about acknowledging that these, what's happening right now is thrilling for us. It's so thrilling. It's so exciting. And rightly so and yet 
it's happened a million times before and it's going to happen a million times again. It's part of a greater cycle. Like, and the cycle, the wheel keeps turning. It's cycles within cycles within cycles. This is not the universe card. This is simply a turn of the wheel. It's a beautiful thing. It's like a turn of the seasons. So we can even interpret it that like, this huge onboarding of our consciousness that allows us to remember ourselves at higher dimensional levels, even that is as commonplace as the shift from winter back to spring. It will happen again. It's like, it will happen again within our lifetimes. It will happen again in other lifetimes. It's just the way it goes. It, in this beautiful realm, it is just cycles that keep turning and every cycle is unique every turn of the wheel is unique in its own way and yet it is a repeat of the same cycles the energy around the wheel of fortune it feels really good like a mostly like a gentle loving reminder not to take ourselves so seriously and to to not sort of let ourselves get caught up in stories like I don't know, um, like stories like we are fighting the the penultimate battle and it's and it's like we are going to like win this war and defeat the evil lizard turds or whatever. Um, but more like that is what this story is what is written into the soap bubble of this universe like the, the beautiful floating, flowing, shimmering bubble of this universe and everything that it means, the story of dark and light playing out, the story of good and evil playing out is what's written into this universe. And so it will continue to play out. And that's not a defeat thing. It is a reminder that like, almost like we get to enjoy the ride a little bit more we get to enjoy the experience without feeling like the stakes are so high and yet they are high too because what Matt like everybody matters here what we experience here matters it's just sort of um it feels like well kind of like the temperance card like we're holding to like everything matters and everything doesn't matter at the same time because the wheel will keep turning forever. The card for September, the reminder for September, what we need to keep in mind is the eight of swords. And this is like basically the reminder that if we have victim consciousness coming up to bug us, and when I say victim consciousness, I mean like when we feel trapped by certain circumstances, like I don't want to be in this relationship anymore, but I can't leave because, or I don't want to work at this job anymore, but I can't quit because, or um, woe is me. I'm going through health things and I can't live the quality of life that I want to live. Um, and we feel very disempowered to it. The Eight of Swords is the reminder that we are the ones who are, we are perpetuating our own prison. So you see the woman is like surrounded by swords there and she has the veil over her face. And it's kind of an in, like a, a symbolic representation that like she is shrouded from herself in the, the, more traditional Smith Rider weight depiction on the card. It's somebody surrounded literally by swords and with a blindfold on. It's like they don't realize because they can't see that they can just get out of that prison. Um, and it's just that gentle and loving reminder as human programmed victimized consciousness comes up that we are the ones who take on the suggestion that we are in prison, uh, not literally, I'm speaking figuratively, 
So we received that suggestion. Like I can't get away from my mother, my narcissistic mother, because, or I'll never, you know, get a, like, it'll always be like this for me. And I'll always be misunderstood. That kind of thing. It's like, when you think that you are imbuing those prison bars with energy, you are creating them. You are perpetuating them. Not like it's your fault, but like your energy, your attention is what's required in order to maintain that manifestation. And if you just slowly withdraw your attention from the perception that those bars keep you uh, in prison, you will dissolve the illusion that the bars existed in the first place. Hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. The thing to keep in mind for October is the Queen of Wands. So exciting. This bitch is so lit. <laughs> she, like, her reminder for us is that it is time to wear our magic. Look at her. She's gorgeous. Wear our magic fully on the outside, just like adorned. Like you are wearing your magic, you are your most authentic, sensual, sexual, magnetic self. And by sexual, I don't mean like you're on the market. I mean, like you are, you are not suppressing any part of yourself. You are not suppressing your sexuality. You're not suppressing your sensuality. You're not suppressing your magic. To the contrary, you're wearing it fully on the outside. And guess what? It's not about anybody else. You're not doing this to put on a show you're not doing this to to get validation or to have other people acknowledge or compliment you you're doing it because you love yourself and you're like I'm not are you kidding like I'm not um I'm not shrouding this anymore I love myself and I I give myself permission to radiate freely and fully and as you do that, as you occupy that state of being, you also permission so many other people to do the same, which is, that's the amazing domino effect that we have. The card to keep in mind for November is the Six of Cups, which is usually talking about a fond nostalgia. So just looking to the past nostalgically, like the good old days, the simpler days, the easier times. The way I interpret this is like, you know, as we receive this huge onboarding of consciousness, it's possible that throughout the remainder of the year, I mean, I kind of feel like I'm going to go into some predictive stuff because I can't help myself. I kind of feel like it's going to be a lot that comes in this at the beginning of this year, just a lot of stuff. And then it kind of bottoms out. And for the rest of the year, we're kind of like, we're, we're doing it without training wheels. Okay. So, so it's almost like, like, yeah, like if we were big, beautiful birds that are like, we, we jump out of the nest and we're soaring and there's a wind under our wings that is lifting us up and that we are like, we're flying passively just on the current um that we're riding and then that current drops off and now for the rest of the year we are like we are flying through our own mechanical flapping and that's really you know so we're going through sort of like ooh, various contractions various human um responses and the one for november is looking back fondly and kind of being like I wish I could just go back to the days where I just watched Gilmore Girls and I never watched Gilmore Girls. I don't know why I use that as an example, but I just watched Gilmore Girls and whatever, gossiped with my friends and existed at that level of consciousness or kind of like when Cypher in The Matrix, he's like, I don't want to read the code. I don't want, I don't want to look at the code, the binary code and see like brunette, blonde, redhead anymore. I want there to be mystery again. And I want to go back into the matrix and I want to eat the steak, even though I know it's code. Now I know it's code, but I just want to taste the steak. And I wish I could go back 
to the time before I knew it was code. So I could just eat the steak and just believe the steak is a steak. It kind of feels like that to me. Like in November, there's going to be like, oh man, once times were simpler, there was some niceness to being not awake in this whole thing. And it's okay for us to have that um, nostalgia. It's not a big deal. Just let it be there while it's there. And then the card for December is the Knight of Pentacles, which is, to me, it's the, the thing to keep in mind is like, we will have made incredible progress through the year um, in terms of our mastery. The Knight of Pentacles, like, again, there are a lot of pentacles in this reading. One, two, three. Yeah, there's more pentacles than any other um, suit in this reading. And <clears throat> the Knight of Pentacles is in the process of mastery. He's not a full master. This isn't the King of Pentacles or the Queen of Pentacles, but he's on his way. Like he is a master. He's just not like the master. You know what I mean? He's not the master but he has been in this process of mastery by doing the things by doing that like if you decide that you're going to take up um tabata and you you're like you're like discipline like tabata is your discipline you do tabata multiple times a week and you do it um with a lot of consciousness and awareness like it's a movement practice so you're doing it through a lot of consciousness and awareness you're integrating meditation with it and you're not doing it to like lose weight or tone up or whatever, but you're doing it because you understand that discipline is required for us to achieve mastery. Kind of one of the, <clears throat> I did a dry run of this or like my first run uh, of this on Instagram. If you want to listen to it, you can say a lot of the same things, but it comes out differently, of course. But in, in that one, I kind of went off on a little diatribe <laughs> towards the end where I was talking about this card and saying like, we don't want our magic unless and until we are able to wield it properly. And I know I already mentioned that in this one, but I seem to recall saying on the one I did on Instagram that it's like, I think, I don't know, I think I said it there. Maybe I said it here. Who knows? If I'm repeating myself, I apologize. But like, we don't want to be given the long sword of our full magic powers and our full psychic powers um, before we know how to move deftly with wooden swords. Do you know what I mean? Like we want to practice with wooden swords first. That's what I'm saying. We are so freaking powerful. We're so, so powerful. It's frustrating because when I go to say this, it just feels like it comes out sounding like empty words, like something I've said a million times and other people have been saying, and it like, it's almost like I can feel it not landing and I just have to accept <laughs> that it'll land for those who are ready to have it fully land and for others it will land whatever it'll land to the depth that it's supposed to for everyone but okay nobody nobody achieves mastery without discipline nobody none of us can hold the amount of power that we actually our instruments for we cannot truly allow ourselves to be instruments for that degree of power unless we have chosen a path of discipline and mastery and the knight of pentacles is like the reminder like this this year is not to me this is a year of being in training that's what it feels like so um, you know, if somebody's going off on a quest, like if you think about a, a, a movie or a TV show, like last night I was watching with my husband, 
um, I think it's called the Blue-Eyed Samurai. I watched the first episode with him. And, you know, we we see the main character and she's obviously on a quest and we don't know what the full quest is, but she's on a quest. But she didn't embark on this quest right off the bat. She trained and prepared for that quest. So there was a large chunk of her life that was in devotion to the preparation for the quest. And that's what this year feels like to me. So 2024 doesn't feel like a year where like the big, I don't know, the big massive things start happening, but more like this is an internal process of integrating a level of consciousness within ourselves and being able to wield it masterfully that all prepares us for the coming years where the big things happen, really big things happen. So the thing to remember with the Knight of Pentacles is to acknowledge how far you've come and the amazing work that you've done throughout the year. Okay, and then finally, I pulled two sort of two cards that are like my final thoughts cards, or they're not my final thoughts, but you'll get my final thoughts. <laughs> so um, again, I pulled it from the tarot and then also the Starseed Oracle. So from the tarot, it is divine wisdom. And this is a major arcana card that is unique to this um, deck. And the Oracle card is the seven star sisters, which is, it says birthing creations, tapestry of life expression. But when I tune in to both of them and the message that wants to come through um, with these final two cards is, again, a reiteration that we're so powerful and we do not realize that we are the creators. We are, we are the creators of worlds. We are the creators of an entire, entire new realities. We can collapse timelines and we can bring new timelines to life. We have the ability to hurt each other as well as, um, I don't know, raise each other up, exalt each other. We have the ability to end life and the, the ability to bring in new life. And that is just scratching the surface. That is not even... I'm not even talking about our magic gifts right now. I'm just talking about our ability to create. We are so immensely powerful. And <sighs> the divine wisdom card feels like it is the acknowledgement that Okay, I'm going to bring it back to a theme that I was talking about last year. And I, I speak about these things very, very cautiously. I feel like a lot of us are angelic beings. I personally feel like I am a fallen angel. Um, like I just know this about myself. It's not, it doesn't feel ungrounded at all. And yet I'm, you know, aware that if I were to say this in conversation with a random person, they would probably think I'm an egomaniac um, and also like totally, totally unhinged. Um, and yet I can hold this awareness of myself and hold a very grounded life and also revel in the groundedness, the grounded moments, revel in the, the boring moments of my life because they allow me to experience my own redemption. And when I say I'm a fallen angel, I do not mean that I think I'm a, an evil soul. I mean that, I mean, like fallen angel is a concept that we have in a lot of our mythology that you can connect with because we already kind of have um, an understanding around fallen angel. But I, what I mean is, I know that I am a higher dimensional being and that at those higher dimensional levels, I have a lot of power. And I also, as this human being that I am, have a lot of power and it's connected with those higher dimensional levels. And in the past, I have not understood how to use that power properly. 
A lot of us didn't. A lot of us were very self-indulgent and very reckless with consequences here. Um, some of us were reckless in terms of not caring about the pain that we created and the co collateral damage. And others among us were reckless in the sense of not understanding the, the nature of this realm as being one of cause and effect. And so we literally cannot, we cannot insert ourselves in this realm at all without royally fucking it up, like through the butterfly effect, like even opening a stargate changes it even observing this realm ob changes it and not only did did we observe it and open stargates and but we also walked through the stargates and then we um created relationships with the beings who rightfully exist here and then we created a new race of beings I know that I had a hand in royally fucking this whole thing up and my, my purpose, my mission is to do my part in cleaning up the mess that I had a hand in creating with the knowledge that it can never, we can never set it back to the way that it was before and yet we can clean it up um and I know that's that's what I'm here to do and I feel that a lot of us will remember with much greater clarity similar things about ourselves and we will understand that like at a higher dimensional level I know I remember how we create I remember I see it with crystal clarity and I know that I can create in that way I also was given the instructions on how to open stargates and i'll tell you what that information scares the bejeebs out of me and i do not feel ready to even remember it let alone teach it because um i know how powerful that is and i don't i am not ready to fuck with that basically so the final thoughts is just i mean that's that's what the final thoughts are, but that's me trying to explain it through my own experience. But the final thoughts are like, on one hand, we are living out these brief mortal lives. And it's important that we do, very important that we do. And at the same time, we are beginning to remember the information that we have shielded from ourselves. Like, even when I talk about the false matrix, you know, creating this state of amnesia for us, a lot of it feels like us creating this state of amnesia for ourselves um, because we didn't deserve, I feel like I did not deserve to have this level of power back and I've had to go through certain things in order to demonstrate that I am worthy of these new levels of power and lucidity that want to come in and when I say worthy of or deserving of it's in no way to suggest that I'm like base born or you know not good enough to have it but like I mean deserving like I can hold this power with integrity and recognize the effect that I have on an, on a like mundane, like quotidian level, like the, the effect that I can have just in my everyday life, just in my tiny, seemingly negligible interactions out in the community. Never mind the power that I have, the ability to channel through as I connect with my higher dimensional self. And so it feels to me like the final thoughts are like, this is all, this is all us. And I, I believe that if you're still with me at the end of this year ahead energy report, uh, that in all likelihood, this is a message for you as well. And you have some higher dimensional role 
to play. It doesn't have to be the same as mine, but the final thoughts are like, we, this, like, we're huge. We're huge. We are huge as beings, massive, extremely powerful. And that's sort of the objective of what we are remembering. Um, the objective of everything that is coming through And then just to tie it up in a nice bow is to come back to those first two cards of the, the victory of reclaiming this realm, reclaiming the human experience, reclaiming, um, reclaiming our power, but doing it through a connection to the sweetness of life and the generosity of this now moment. So doing it through when you can tune into this now moment and experience how much is actually already here right now, I don't mean like an itemized gratitude list of things that you already have to be grateful for, although that's part of it. That's often like an introduction to it, but I mean like, oh, I, it's, it goes beyond words. If you can tune deeply into this now moment and feast on what is available to you right now, already materialized, already available through your senses, your psychic senses and your physical senses. Like different sounds, different, like different nuances, different um, like qualities of ambience in your environment. Like there's so much here and we're missing it all the time. When we can do that, then it's kind of, that is a portal to being able to hold both the human self and be grounded on terra firma, which is also the reason that we keep seeing like meditation, meditation, cultivation of discipline, a path of discipline and mastery, like through the pentacles and through the, um, through meditation cards is so that we can hold the human and hold the higher dimensional self and toggle back and forth between the two and also exist as both at the same time to maintain this human life and to feel the weight of the consequences of our choices and the 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 magnitude of our power while at the same time accessing our higher dimensional awareness and being able to become vessels of that power. It's like our human bodies and our mortal human lives and the, the pain that we feel here is the price that we have to pay in order to be given access to that power again. Because when we wielded it as just higher dimensional beings, we created a lot of chaos here um but when we become vessels for it as incarnated humans um mortal incarnated humans who feel the full gamut of this experience we can then understand the impact of all of that power hopefully that makes sense um hopefully this energy report served you i feel like it's different than the ones that i usually do but this is the way this year wants to be presented, at least through me. Um, if you like the style of my energy reports, then I do a free weekly energy report that I send out via email, which you can subscribe to totally free. You never have to put in any kind of payment information. It will always and forever be free. It is a gift from my heart to yours that I do every single week. And then also, if this information really speaks to you, on any level, then I have the following things coming up that I am very excited to share. So first of all, in February, I have my fifth and probably final live round of Into the Akasha Darting, which is my program that teaches you how to access the Akashic Records. This round is really going to be focused on doing it together and practicing and prioritizing that um, because like you can do it. <laughs> and, and I want to show you how. When you sign up, you automatically get access to my previous round, which happened last year, as well as my third round, which happened in February of 2021. 
So you get access to all of that content to start listening to. It's um, instant and forever access, lifetime access. You can start listening to it and start practicing right now. And, and starting in February, we are going to be doing live calls together. So that is available to sign up for on early bird um, pricing. I also have a program called the avatar. It is a group mentorship program. And it is for those of us who are really feeling the activations that I'm talking about, really feeling a uh, higher dimensional awareness of self coming in, feeling um, the themes, the, the like memories, just the, the knowing perhaps like I described, just knowing that I am a higher dimensional being, um, I'm knowing that on a certain level, maybe you are an angelic being, maybe you are a dragon, maybe you are a dragon rider, maybe you are um, a Pleiadian, maybe you are a Syrian, an Arcturian, maybe you are a representative of a certain master, um, ascended master field of consciousness, whatever. And you are calibrating yourself to being able to move through the world from this level of consciousness. So the avatar is my 12 week group mentorship program to help you clarify that get more information about it lock into it um, and really integrate it for yourself and adopt it uh, moving forward in very powerful ways in your life and then i have my all access pass which includes everything that i run this year it's like my whole entire suite of programs and courses, including ones that are not available for sale on my website. So everything that I've already created, everything that I run live and everything that I create new, including the avatar, including this next round of Into the Akasha, including upcoming live rounds of the Psychic Activation course, and so on. The only thing it doesn't include is my Akashic Records training and certification program, because that is a whole journey in and of itself. Uh, so those are available, the avatar and the all access pass are available on pre-sale um, for probably like a few more days until I get my shit together <laughs> and get the graphics made. Uh, so you will be getting in on a total steal of a price. So much, so much savings, especially in the all access pass. If you love everything that I do and you're already like, I just want to be in all of it anyway, you cannot beat the price that it is at right now while it's on pre-sale. You won't be able to beat the price that it'll be at at its full price either, but like the savings are insane on pre-sale right now. Okay, that's it. I love you guys so much. I hope that you have the most amazing month of January, the most amazing 2024, and I'll catch you for our monthly energy report. Bye. <laughs>